Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 where things are a little bit different now because I have now moved on to my new computer a very fancy new computer that I am enjoying pushing to its various limits and in terms of pushing things to their limits KSP2 seems to be just that since it's not exactly the most optimised game in the world so although this really isn't finished right now I would like to do some more things and in particular today I've got a nice little challenge in mind. Unfortunately my save games don't copy over and considering we really don't do much I don't think we really lose much in starting again so I'm just going to boot up a new campaign. I think it's rather appropriate that this is going to be our flag for this one. Let's get our agency colours to match the flag. Okay, so what insanity do I have planned for us today? Well, something has been pointed out to me on Discord, and that is because this game is rather very much unfinished, one of the major things that's missing is heating effects. And it's not just re-entry heating that's missing, all heating effects in the game are not enabled. Which gives me a horribly wonderful idea. So obviously this is going to be patched out. I imagine heating effects will be one of the earliest things that they're adding after they, you know, fix some of the game-breaking bugs. And that means that Kerbal here, the star, is actually an landable object. And I want to go there before they fix it and patch it. In particular, I want to land on this damn thing. I want to plant a flag on this damn thing. And I am not going to try and get back from it. So it's going to be a one-way trip. Unfortunately, the in-game trip banner doesn't quite have an inbuilt function for landing on the sun for some reason. So I just turned to one of the old uh, KSP-1 Delta V calculators. And... In order to fully land on the sun, we need about 80,000 delta V. But the sun, or Kerbal, does have an atmosphere. Atmosphere that would normally absolutely set you on fire if you got anywhere near it. But here, we're going to be able to use that as a wonderfully large braking device. Now, I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to leave one person on the surface of sun forever. So instead, we are going to put in a two-seater landing camp. Will even be extra nice since they're going to be there for ages. I'm going to give them a viewing cupola. How are they going to survive in the sun? Well, obviously, they're just going to need some kind of solar panels that will give them infinite electricity on a communication antenna so they can get good Wi Fi once they're there. And we'll leave the growing food up to them, but it should be fine. There's plenty of energy on the sun for photosynthesis. A sensible amount of parachutes is, but there's nothing sensible about this mission, so a lot of parachutes is the answer. Very real possibility this thing's going to be crushed as it lands, but meh. So if this is the entry pod, I just need to throw on a decoupler and then put things together to try and get this thing into spacish. We do have xenon things here, but we only have the basic tiny little xenon things, none of the modded xenon ones. And these really don't have the thrust uh, to get something like this where we want it to go. Could probably use these really well if I wanted to just do a probe, but I kind of feel like planting a flag on the moon, uh, on the sun, is going to be funny. So I'm going to use nuclear power. And here we've got the swerve engine. Nice, big, chunky, and fueled with just hydrogen. So, okay, I love it. That is a hydrogen fuel tank. The super large hydrogen fuel tank. It doesn't even have a name yet, but it looks pretty, and I'm having it. This has enough delta V to do exactly what we need it to do, so now all I need to do is work out how the hell I launch this thing into space. Bearing system seems quite nice. There we go. We've got our insane thing hidden away in there. It's the largest engine in the game. We do not have uh, enough thrust to wait to get us off the ground. So time to strap on a bunch of boosters then. Here yeah, there we go with 
eight boosters around the outside. That is enough for this thing to hopefully get off the ground. We, of course, want to be absolutely sensible, so we're going to give it a nose cone. Yay, and then this vessel is called the Wish. I have no idea if this is going to fly. We will just have to find out. Otherwise, we're going to take Bill and Valentina. They can go up to space and be stranded on the sun for an indefinite amount of time. Inside it just broke. So evidently we're not stable and not attached enough to the central section. It is really fucking heavy, so not too surprising. Okay, it doesn't seem to be an option to auto strut anymore. So let us go all the way back to strutting things the old fashioned way. Okay, apparently Bob's also joined in this one. Fine, if if he wants to volunteer for that, he is more than welcome. Uh, staging's not right. See if we can fix that before everyone dies. Okay, right. Well, we want to go to the sun. The sun's about there, so let's go that way. Um, this is probably going to blow up. Anyway. Lift off. We have engine release. Here we go. All is good. We have cleared the tower. This does have sufficient thrust for now at least. And start pitching over. Don't want to pitch over too fast because I don't trust this thing. Same time, something this heavy really could use a gravity turn. Uh oh, uh oh, I pitched over too fast. We're doomed, we're doomed. Um, that's really pretty though. Yeah, this is pointing the wrong way. Let's uh, restart. Oh, and that time I forgot to redo the uh, staging. That time we're clear. See if I can get a tiny bit of a pitch over. Just the tiniest bit. Problem is, we've got so much drag on our nose that this really does want to flip upside down. We are getting into a very rarefied atmosphere here, so hopefully we can hold this a little bit better. Yeah, we're effectively in space now. Dollar stage burnout, so couple. Nice. Got the atmosphere here so we can ditch the fairing. Fairing immediately reconnected. Okay, note to self. Don't ditch fairing. Okay, play fairing. We can now deploy our solar panels. So our antenna. We're going to have a long trip back home. There we go. We have achieved orbit. And yeah, to set up before I say again, this game is absolutely gorgeous. Bugs aside, they have made an absolutely beautiful thing. So plugged in a manoeuvre to let us break orbit of. Kerbin, we will still have Delta V left in the stage afterwards. Into the sun! Just look at that, that is absolutely stunning. Oop, and while I've been playing around with that, we have definitely broken orbit. Now we're just going to drift out here and then start our braking maneuver. Yeah, that's that stage done, so let's separate.
go. Our final stage is out. Go the nuclear engines. 16,000 delta V. ASP Ricky says the atmosphere is 600 kilometers. Yeah, we overshot a little bit. That's fine. The one thing that's really annoying is you can't seem to actually get the orbital info out from the maneuver plan, which is really awkward. Kind of makes the maneuver planner kind of useless. Yeah, I'll go for this maneuver, burns off some more of our fuel, circularizes the orbit a little bit more. Then I've still got 1000 delta V to fine tune. Let's go for 60 kilometers. Okay, here we are approaching the sun. It is very bright, very boily looking, very pretty. Probably not the kind of thing we should land on. We'll find out soon enough. It's very unhappy with me being here, that's definitely true. So in theory we should be in the outer edges of the atmosphere now. Oh, that's all destroyed. <laughs> okay. Well, we got that. We got within 100 kilometers of the Kerbal before vessel arbitrarily destroyed. Not sure if that was due to atmospheric effects. We were going in massive, massive speed. But we tried. We got closer to the sun than you really should be able to. Okay, but just to see how this goes, I have loaded uh, the save and I've turned on um, indestructible parts just to see what it's like on the surface of the sun, if we can indeed get that. Uh, bleeding off the last of our fuel. Separate. Probably pull in the solar panels. Right, got rid of the annoying spammy messages. Down to 300, still not showing any sign of an atmosphere here. However, travelling at 90,000 metres per second. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any atmosphere here is the problem. But that's fine. We came all this way to mess about. Going to do one last bit of messing around. I'm just going to point this thing at the planet. If there's no atmosphere, then we're going to have to litho break. Safety first, let's lower the landing gear. Apply our useless parachutes for the hell of it. Right, 100 kilometers. Safety, let's pull in the solar panels. We're all about safety here at Kerbal Space Agency. It's just terrifying to watch. <laughs> Numbers are rapidly approaching zero. I've got no idea where the ground exactly is. This is going to hurt. This is not going to hurt. Um, we are under the ground. There we go. Um, okay. So there is no surface. There's just a death field around it. Well, we managed to make it into the sun, so I am calling this a victory. So Bob can jump out. Uh, apparently the other two have died, but Bob can jump out and he can drift around in his new home. Well, as he falls through the universe and through space and time, I think that's a pretty good place to leave that for today. So let me know what you thought. The wacky idea. But I had a lot of fun doing it. Good playing around some of the new parts. And if you have... Uh, any other ideas of weird, wacky things I should try around in the rather broken state of KSP2 right now, please do let me know. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you next time. Until then, remember to be kind to yourselves and everyone else. Cheers.